Our next guest is CNN's chief political correspondent and co-anchor of State of the Union, which airs Sunday mornings at 9 on CNN. Please welcome back to the show, Dana Bash. Person. I know, thank you for making the trip. My pleasure, thank you. This is very nice. Last time I saw you was on a Zoom screen. I know, I know. We're inching, inching back to normal. Well, then a very interesting thing, though. The tables were turned. You came here, mm -hmm. and I think a first for us, you were just on a CNN Zoom screen. You did a, a live hit from our dressing room. I did. Because, you know, we taped this early in the day. Uh, Joe Biden has just spoken mm -hmm. uh, while we are talking here. What was your reaction, not just to uh, the speed in which the Taliban has taken back mm -hmm. the country, but Joe Biden's remarks today? They were very focused on what you mentioned in, in your open, which is that Americans are done with this 20-year war, right? And so it was for domestic consumption. It was making the case that as bad and as hard as this is, that if it didn't happen now, it could have happened five years ago if the U.S. pulled out then, or 15 years ago if the U.S. stays longer. But it doesn't change the fact that we still don't know why the execution seems so bungled, right? I mean, yeah. the fact that we have these images, but the images tell the story of people who were asking to get out and knew this deadline was coming and didn't get approval or didn't get the, the green light and just didn't get taken out before this happened. Yeah, because there's a lot, been a lot of reporting of people in Afghanistan knew this day were coming, mm -hmm. you know, the special immigrant visa, 18,000 people exactly. at least who were backlogged. So they knew it was coming. And I think another thing to keep in mind is I don't think a lot of Americans day to day think about Afghanistan. Definitely but not. But we now have these images that are sort of indelible as to what we're seeing. And yet we also have these bad faith arguments by those on the right who are forgetting that the plan that is being carried out right now was Donald Trump's plan. He put it in place. He set the deadline. Well, let me back up. He made the agreement inside Afghanistan for the pullout. He uh, pulled most of the troops out, save for 2,500, and then set the deadline. So the only question for Joe Biden when he took office is whether or not he would stand by that or change things. And when he was vice president, he, I guess now famously, was a very um, minority voice within the Obama administration telling then President Obama, we should get out now. And President Obama ultimately decided to stay. But it is just a reminder that now President Biden has wanted to get out of Afghanistan for quite some time. And that's what he basically said in his speech, that we need to end this and we need to focus as Americans on threats that are much more grave, much more uh, pressing, like China and like Russia. You reported from inside Afghanistan mm -hmm. at a time when there maybe was some optimism. It was so different, Seth. I was with then Vice President Cheney. Uh, first, we made a surprise trip to Iraq, which is a whole different story. But then we went to Afghanistan. And the reason he was there, it was because it was the opening of the General Assembly. And so it was totally bizarre to go in. I was part of a very small press pool. Uh, but he went in, and then we followed to a very small, smoke-filled room. But there were elected members of the parliament inside Afghanistan, and there were women there. There were members of the Taliban who were elected sitting side by side. And I remember thinking, wow, this is amazing, and wondering if it was fleeting. And the answer is yes, because it is, as you said, hubris for America time and time again to try to impose ideals and a philosophy on a place that just isn't interested in it, and that was proof by the fact that 300,000 or however many Afghan troops were trained and they, for whatever reason, just didn't have the will. Obviously, there was fear in there, but they didn't have the will to fight. You, uh, you we talked about it, you reported in Afghanistan. We're very lucky right now to have people reporting on the ground, which and, talking about fear, you know, I will uh, say the safety of my desk is about <laughs> as, as much as I would you risk. And, and uh, uh, your colleague, Clarissa Reward, uh, who's been doing reporting from inside the country. And, you know, there's sort of an eight-second uh, clip that's going around right now, as well as a meme that she's addressed. Um, and again, these are bad faith actors, uh, both elected officials and in the media, who are trying to frame uh, what she said. How upsetting is it to you that, especially when they're attacking the people that are doing the, the sort of um, 
you know, the, the boot leather actually being there in it real doesn't, time. I don't even have words to describe how upsetting it is because you're exactly right. She is there, she is on the ground, she is reporting real time what is happening in the most dangerous of circumstances for anybody of any gender. And here she is as a woman doing it and confronting members of the Taliban who said to her she was, she was covered, but she needed to be covered more because you could still see her face. She needed to be covered more because you could still see her fingers. She needed to be wearing gloves. And she's doing her reporting for everybody in the world, particularly Americans, um, with these kinds of, of dangers and these kinds of realities. And for all the people who criticize her, I'd like them to go spend five seconds in her shoes, never mind uh, five minutes or, or five days and, or months, which is what she's done combined. She's such a badass, Seth. I mean, I can't say it. And by the way, she, not for nothing, she has two babies at home. She's a mom. It is, uh, it is truly, uh, truly impressive. Although I have two kids at home, and, and there are times where that's yeah. when I want to go to Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, you know, you know the feeling where I, you're I like, do. I'm, I'm a mom. I'm going to go mom. somewhere a little yeah, bit more low keyed. <laughs> um, so I want to talk to you. The last time we spoke, uh, you were with a couple of your colleagues, and now um, uh, a lot has changed even since then. Uh, you're co hosting State of the Union. Mm -hmm. uh, your career began. Uh, when the news uh, technology was certainly different. Um, yeah. What were your early days in, in journalism? Well, I started at CNN right out of college. In fact, I was still in school. I, it was my second semester of my senior year. I was living in Washington and I started freelancing. And my first job job, I got right on my 22nd birthday, and which is in, in the summer right after I graduated. And it was to work in the tape library. So that means that there was videotape yeah. and there was a library for uh, to house that videotape, and none of that exists anymore. I mean, we don't do videotape, right? No. It's all, and so when I tell people that, they're like, what is that? I said, you know the thing that you see in the movies where they put the, the you know, go back and watch broadcast news, which also the kids don't know what it is. But that's, <laughs> exactly. what, but that's basically what it was. That was the technology back then. I mean, I, I worked as an intern uh, for Comedy Central in the mid-90s, and my job was literally running videotapes, getting in taxis and running videotapes to other parts of the city. It was, and it's that's crazy amazing. to think back, because yeah. again, you just can't, you, none of us can uh, conceive of the fact that our 20s will be ancient history. <laughs> you know? Ancient, ancient history. I mean, to think that we didn't have, I mean, we barely had email. We yeah. barely had the internet. We barely had any of that. God, I feel like I'm 100 years old. I, I should know. stop talking. Yeah, we should stop. Let's talk about <laughs> uh, uh, someone that uh, young people like, AOC. Yeah. You did, uh, you, you did a, basically an hour special mm -hmm. with her. And uh, you've obviously interviewed and spent time with many politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I'm alone in making a comment that there's something unique about her. What did you find in your time with her? There is, and you know, you had a, a cameo. I was very happy in to that, make a cameo. In Thank that you. hour, because when I was doing my, my research, I watched the interview that she did, she's sitting right here with you, and there was such a classic moment. I was trying to figure out how to get at the fact that one of the reasons she is so polarizing, and in particular, she, people on the right are so fixated on her, her is because she's so beautiful and she's so young and they don't really know what to do with her. And you just nailed it. You just went at it in a very, very um, clever way. So instead of me figuring out how to ask the question, I just put it right on you. Thank you. So Look, thank anytime you for that. I can find my way <laughs> into stuff on other networks because I'm trying to like spread it out. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. It, was, it was very welcome. <laughs> but um, there is something about her that I feel like um, you pointed out, which is uh, that she's also not ashamed of those things. I feel no. like they're... You know, there's this long history of uh, women politicians having to, you know, like bend themselves towards what we perceive as strengths of uh, male politicians. Mm -hmm. And she sort of unapologetically doesn't do that. My favorite segment in, in this hour that we did uh, was about that, which is that she said there is power in femininity and that's why I own it. I mean, she did a tutorial for Vogue magazine where she did her whole beauty routine, including her famous red lips. And not a lot of women politicians would ever do that. And the reason is because, for the most part, women conform to the idea of male power. And that's the argument that she was making. And it's not even something that ever occurred to me. And I think it's generational. And, uh, and it's very unique to her, which is part of the conversation that I thought was so interesting. Uh, well, it's always interesting talking to you. I really do appreciate you making the trip I'm in so person. I'm so glad to be here. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you. You guys, State of the Union airs Sundays at 9 a.m. and noon on CNN.